How's it going, guys? Past level question for step one, as well as for family medicine for 2CK. Some of you will think this question is too easy. That's fine. Uh, it's not every question I make is meant to be overly dramatic or nitpicky, okay? I mean, the idea is to focus on high yield stuff that's going to increase your scores. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Good video like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now I'll start the clip. 62-year-old woman. She has a 30-minute history of diplopia. Three-day history of fever, headache, fatigue, right-sided facial pain, waxing and waning blurred vision in the right eye. She has a temperature of 100.8 Fahrenheit. Physical examination shows tenderness and mild swelling of the right side of the face. Laboratory studies show an elevated ESR and a hemoglobin of 10.5 grams per deciliter. Normal range 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating women and men, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women, which the thong is most likely diagnosis. So let's just walk through our answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice C, trigeminal neuralgia, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be 11 out of 10 lancinating pain that, that lasts for about 30 seconds in a patient who uh, is exposed to a minor stimulus, such as a gust of wind or brushing one's hair, brushing one's teeth. Okay. And uh, there's no abortive therapy because the pain is so transient. Uh, carbamazepine could be used in theory for prophylaxis, although I've never seen it assessed. Often confused with cluster headache, uh, which would be instead a male 20s to 40s who uh, wakes up in the middle of the night with 11 out of 10 lancinating pain behind his uh, right eye, sometimes associated with lacrimation or rhinorrhea. And you would give oxygen to abort cluster headache, verapamil for prophylaxis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, optic neuritis, wrong answer. This would be associated with multiple sclerosis. Whilst that could present with blurred vision, yes. Okay, I mean, this isn't MS. A woman 20s to 30s, blurred vision, central scotoma being loss of central vision or um, changes in color vision. Inflammation of the optic nerve, that's optic neuritis. So you can get any change in vision, essentially. It's nonspecific. Uh, associated with Marcus Gunn pupil, okay, so relative afferent pupillary defect, that's the light swinging between the eyes, uh, see, uh, seeing the apparent dil dilatation slash dilation of the uh, affected eye, creating nerve 2 lesion. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, embolus, wrong answer. Just a general distractor here. I mean, a lot we could talk about, especially on the 2CK front, when we consider uh, carotid stenosis uh, in patients who have hypertension. Uh, or patients who have atrial fibrillation with, with the left atrial mural thrombus that can launch off to the eye, right? So that's a lengthy, lengthy discussion for 2CK. Um, so general distractor, wrong answer. Choice B, arteritis, correct answer. Okay, so I mean, this refers to temporal or giant cell arteritis, OMG. So we have pain in the right eye, and there's going to be some features here that could be considered more difficult. You say, well, why is there a fever? Uh, in autoimmune flares, you can occasionally get fever, okay? SLE, IBD, RA, you can occasionally, sarcoidosis, you can occasionally get fever, okay? It's not 103, it's not a high-grade fever, not that there's a mandatory cutoff, uh, but a low-grade fever, that's uh, often seen in flares. Uh, ESR, nonspecific, just autoimmune propensity. Now, this low hemoglobin, this anemia of chronic disease, okay? So, I mean, you're going to see uh, sometimes a low hemoglobin in uh, not just autoimmune disease, sometimes uh, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, okay? But that's why we have the low hemoglobin here. Uh, when an elderly patient has low hemoglobin, you do have to consider things like iron deficiency anemia due to uh, colorectal cancer, diverticular bleed, etc. But this is clearly uh, temporal arteritis. You say, why is there facial pain that's nonspecific? It's not necessarily temporal region. You can get uh, jaw claudication, okay, and uh, ipsilateral jaw claudication in temporal arteritis. You need to know that you will give uh, steroids, IV methylprednisolone, uh, to decrease risk of blindness uh, before you biopsy. Very fucking important, very high yield. Uh, temporal arteritis often associated with polymyalgia, rheumatica, pain and stiffness of proximal muscles uh, peripherally. And you will not have an elevation in creatine kinase. You will not have weakness on physical exam. If you have a patient who has weakness on physical exam or has an elevate and or an elevation in creatine kinase, that's polymyositis, not polymyalgia, rheumatica. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, wrong answer, no relation to this question, just a general distractor for students who don't actually know what this is. Uh, you'll get a vignette where there's two requirements. The first is the combination of an upper and lower motor neuron finding. Okay, mm -hmm. so for example, a Babinski reflex or brisk reflexes, those are, those are UMN findings. Uh, you get have fasciculations, uh, atrophy, lower motor neuron findings. 
That's the first combined requirement. The second is no sensory abnormalities. Okay, so when you get like uh, difficult neuro questions, big fucking paragraph, you're not sure what's going on, and then they mention that there's like some sort of sensory abnormality in the patient, you can say cool, not ALS. Okay, so very important when we get to TCK level stuff. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.